ontology, the being, the, the, the term being in our, not only in our Western philosophy, but also in our languages, has two meanings. One, purely existential. Something is, meaning it exists. But also, in essential existence, so in answer to, this, to, the, to the question, what is this? No? So, uh, this is uh, this and this, or this thing exists. So they are double. So perhaps we should say it's impossible to distinguish them on the level of the essence, so ascribing a predicate which differentiates them. But we can distinguish them on the level of the purely existential. They exist. But it's impossible to say what defines them. Is it clear this distinction between the essence and the existence? It's a very, mm. it's a very fundamental problem in philosophy. So, uh, oh, what's your name? Andrew. So, the fact that Andrew exists has nothing to do with what Andrew, Andrew is. You are, uh, uh, what is your nationality? USA, USA, blonde, uh, young uh, student, etc., etc. So I can define him on the level of the essence. If someone asks me, "Who is? What is this man?" I can give definitions, which uh, will answer to the question, "What is? Who is?" But this has nothing to do with uh, this fact that you will admit is more important that he exists. So the difference between existence and essence is fundamental, but uh, oh. and it depends uh, on the level of language is the same. This comes from the very banal fact that the, that the verb being in Indo-European languages has two meanings. One, God is, uh, this uh, pen is, exists, and also the, the copula which assigns predicates. This uh, pen is black. This man is blonde. Hmm? You, you must never forget this double meaning of the verb being, which it has only in Indo-European languages. That's why we have ontology in Indo-European <laughs> languages and not in other languages. It would not be possible to make this distinction. So to distinguish the essence from the existence. I have a question about that. Is it clear? Yeah. Is it clear? So, no, just to get, get, get perhaps, I, I, I'm a uh, hypothesis, perhaps uh, what uh, Schelling and uh, uh, all the problem you're asking uh, uh, implies that uh, we can distinguish these two terms on the level of the purely existential level, but we cannot say why they are different, what they are. Because in order to answer why they are different, I have to say ah, it is different because one is white and the other is black. I don't have this. I only have they exist. Perhaps. This is a little muddled, but it brings up to me a couple of ontological questions. This is a new way to look at it for me. me? What you're saying is a new way to look at it. But um, two classic problems in ontology. Um, also kind of the idea that um, essence precedes existence or existence precedes yeah. essence. So just the, the, basic, the basic, you know, schoolman problem that's finally more or less resolved for about a, a decade uh, with the existentialists. That issue comes up because it sounds to me like you both ex es uh, existence and essence are on the same side of the ontological formula in what you're saying. Maybe I'm wrong. And the other is the cogito of, of Descartes, where your you your ontology, your 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 being comes about because you are you think. So <clears throat> and since you use me as an example, I mean uh, do I do you think? <laughs> I, I do all these things, you know, um, but I, somehow it sounds like I've, um, I'm, I'm, I'm existence and, and essence are somehow already um, a priori for me. 
in, what, in the way you're describing it. And so I'm just wondering how, how to reconcile all these ontological, traditional, classical, iconic, ontological yeah. problems. Yeah, I don't know if this is the right uh, uh, moment for do, in doing this. But uh, of course, I was made a very basic and clear, in order to be clear, uh, distinct, distinction of the essence and existence. Uh, but for instance, why, for instance, the uh, Heidegger definition of the Dasein, who then uh, had the consequence that this was called existentialism by this philosophy? Because, as I quoted last day, what he does, he begins by saying the Dasein, that is the, the man, man, is a, a being in which the essence lived lies in the existence. So we cannot. We cannot uh, reconcile. Reconcile. So it's, it's moving from this ontological difference, yeah, essence and existence, and is uh, making them uh, collapse one on the other. So then, what we met, there are a lot of problems. This, all the history of ontology is around this uh, difference. But perhaps we can try to overcome this difference, to put this term in, in difference and try to think a different figure of being beyond the distinction of essence and existence. No? We could do this, for instance. And Hayek was pointing in that direction. And this was already done uh, by the definition of God uh, as uh, the being whose essence is his existence. So, I mean, this... Uh, Problem uh, has, a, has a long story, but we must not take these two aspects as uh, given for always. Uh, perhaps we can uh, try to think uh, differently the difference. <laughs> for instance, uh, putting it by neutralizing, because perhaps uh, in the last instance, uh, the ontological difference is just a metaphysical apparatus in order to, catch, to capture being. And my, my idea is that each time that we face an apparatus, even if it is a metaphysical and ontological apparatus, we have to try to neutralize it. So to see if uh, we can, uh, for instance, separate the two terms like here or uh, put them in difference. This could be. I, I would say that the ontological difference is the fundamental metaphysical apparatus of philosophy. And what is at stake is to capture being. Well, who wants to ask me something? Um, I, I can't help but think of uh, one of your countrymen, uh, uh, Mario Perio, uh, Perniola. Uh, uh, Perniola. Yeah. Um, where, where he talks about thinghood as a separate category, and he adopts a, a, um, a Hegel's distinction. And between Hegel's distinction. Distinction between the externality of being uh, versus uh, an essence so that you can create the divide where existence is the fusion or the synthesis of the two. But thinghood, uh, thinghood by itself um, is an infinitely porous multiplicity, and it's always external to actually being in any way. It's the way uh, the, the negative definition being the thing that isn't anything else. The thing is and that is not anything else. You know, the classic uh, definition of, of essence um, or subject or, or substance. Um, I mean, th that seems to cut that line that doesn't have a problem that, uh, of word like existence. Because, like in the medieval tradition, the act of assembly is, is the unity of, of unit, uh, universal and particular essence and existence, or yeah. essence and being in existence and an act of existence. But um, if, if, if we treat being as, as na uh, by its logical, uh, I don't know, as a logical entity, simply thinghood that's external to, and then essence as what defines it as such, the, the relationship of existence would always be a fusion of those two. Yeah, what I just wanted to say is that uh, uh, the last of the, the achievement